Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift guide and good god is Orn an interesting champion. This is probably the top 3 hardest champions that I've ever made a guide on because the abilities that this champion has, just the sheer amount of combos that this champion has and here you can see I failed the combo because I did it 0.2 seconds too early and the amount of everything this champion has, I'll explain all of it to you. I'm even gonna explain like the ultimate combos on this champion. I'm actually gonna show you, you know what? I'm just gonna show you the ultimate combo just to show you how interesting this champion truly is. So I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. I'm just gonna show you, boom, boom, boom. These, like he can do like four knockoffs in a row if you do like the ultimate combo properly. But more on this later. Let's just start off with his passive. First of all, Orn can spend gold to forge items anywhere on the map. As you can see, my shop is available right now. If I want to buy the stone plate enchant, I click on it, boom, I build a stone plate enchant. As you can see, it does take like two seconds to build it. Like, let me show you again. You know, you can go in a bush. It takes two seconds. You do it and you build it. So how can this be useful? You know, besides the obvious, right? Like whenever you have like a tier three item available, you quickly go in a bush and you buy it. Let me explain to you how this can, like how this can be useful in a different way. As you can see, I've bought the armor item right here. You know, for example, uh, at level one, when you wanna lane against your enemy, you'll buy the armor. You know, if you're against a Fiora, against a Warwick, against a Garen, or any sort of a healing type of enemy, especially if they have Grasp of the Undying, you know, you're laning with your armor, and then let's say, boom, you get 500 gold after farming, you can quickly go back behind your turret, get the Bramble Fest, I think it's bugged right there, because you have to click here to buy it, but like, look, I'm buying it right now. Look, I got a Bramble Fest. Can you imagine how strong it is to get like a Bramble Fest the immediate moment that it is available, without you having to go back? And against the Fiora, she cannot trade against you anymore. Like level one, she's gonna have only like the armor item or like the you know the the the, the blade. She's only gonna have like a tier one item, while you already have a very very big counter to her and a tier two item, which is gonna provide you with amazing stats. So this is another way where it can be extremely useful. Let's talk about the next part of Orn's passive. Orn gains an additional 35% bonus health, armor, or magic resist. This skills with levels. Because as you can see, if I refresh my level, uh, let me just reset the level like this, it's only 11%. Early game, it's only going to be 11%. But of course, whenever you level up once, sorry, not once, until level 5, it goes to 19%. And then you go to level 9, it goes to 27. And then you go to level 13, I believe. Exactly, it goes to 35% and then that's the maximum. So basically like Camille, level 5, level 9, level 13. It keeps scaling up from 11 to 19 to 27 to 35. Of course, this makes Orn an incredible late game champion. Can you just, can you just imagine 35% bonus, you building an Amaranth Twin Guard, which will give you a further 30% bonus, um, like look, you build an armor on Twin Guard, which gives you 55 armor, 55 magic resist, plus 30%, it's gonna be like around like 70, 70 armor and magic resist, even more actually, it's gonna be like 75, and then another 30%, which is gonna be like 100 armor and 100 magic resist from one item. Can you just imagine how unkillable Orn is gonna be in the late game with this combo? But okay, there is more to his passive. So in PC League, Orn can upgrade items. I believe they are a bit lazy because they didn't add it to Wild Rift where he can upgrade items, it seems. So upon reaching level 7, so whenever you reach level 7, crafting items with Living Forge grants nearby ally 5 stacks of Living Forge, allowing them to purchase items anywhere on the map. So let me show you. And yeah, this buff stacks up to 15 uh, times. This effect can be triggered every 3 levels. So let me show you. If I, have an, if I have an ally nearby me, I'm just gonna put the ally somewhere uh, here. Uh, ally dummy, wait. Ally dummy. So if I build an item right now, like let's say, I don't know, like a frozen heart. It now gave my ally five stacks. He can build items by himself. This is obviously extremely powerful because now this ally can build items without having to backport. Now you can imagine how strong this can be. Like, yet again, you can imagine how strong this can be, especially
especially for junglers. Now, let me explain why this is especially good for junglers. Because a jungler often gets the blue buff, you know what I mean? So he's not going to have mana struggles. And a lot of junglers don't have health struggles too, because they are constantly smiting jungle camps. Now, imagine you as an Orn, you know, building an item next to your jungler. Your jungler doesn't have to go back anymore. Right? Like, especially if you have a jungler like Warwick, for example, who constantly heals up, or like a Master Yi with a Blade of the Rune King who is constantly going to be healing up, he's going to be able to stay in the game, maximizing his gold potential. So that's the passive of Orn. I know it's a bit complicated, but that's his passive. Now let's talk about the first ability. Orn slams the ground, creating a fissure, dealing physical damage and slowing the enemies by 55% for 2 seconds. A pillar of rock forms at the fissure and for 4 seconds. The fissure stops shortly after hitting an enemy champion. Let me show you. I'm gonna upgrade everything by the way. Let me show you. Boom. Like that. And it shows a rock. You can do it, you know, without hitting an enemy and it shows a rock. If you're close to an enemy, as you can see, it creates a rock right behind them. So basically, it has a maximum range. Or if you hit an enemy, it immediately stops behind them. And like after a brief moment, it puts a rock behind them. So the rock, you cannot walk through the rock. Like you can't even walk through the rock. You as an Orn cannot even walk through the rock. So it's like you're creating an area, right? Like you're creating an area that the enemy and you cannot walk through. That's what the ability does. This is it, right? Like you throw it, when you hit an enemy, it does damage, it slows them, it creates a rock behind them. Um, now let's talk about the second ability. A lot of text. Let me first show you just how it looks before reading the text. You can use it to any direction. And he, you know, he throws fire. But as you can see, he throws fire and then like another. You see, it's like and then show you again. And as you can also see, he's unstoppable during the casting. So let's 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 just do it on an enemy. There is a lot to digest with this ability because it puts a stack on the enemy. Now, what does this stack do? Let's read it. Orn stomps forward unstoppably, right? Like you can see, is unstoppable, which means no CC can stop you. He breathes fire, dealing a percentage of the enemy's maximum health over 0.75 seconds. Here, it's a lot of damage because I've upgraded the ability quite a lot. Um, but basically, it burns the enemy for their for maximum HP damage. Very good against tanks. Immobilize... Oh, so um, let me explain what this, this means. You see this stack on the enemy, this one right here? This is called Brittle. We've never had a type of CC which is called Brittle in Wild Rift before. But let's read what it means. Immobilizing effects on Brittled targets have their duration increased by 30%. Let me explain. After I've Brittled this enemy, if, for example, my Ash ults this enemy, you know, an Ash arrow is a 3.5 second stun. You can imagine 3.5 seconds increased by 30% is going to be 4.55 second stun. If you can time this properly with your Ash, for example, like, you know, you do this and then your Ash arrow, you're literally stunning the enemy for an eternity, which is ridiculous. And also, the CC does additional damage, additional maximum health damage from 7 to 21%, depending on your level. Obviously, this yet again shows the power of Orn in the late game, because 7% maximum health early game is not a lot of damage, but late game, 21% maximum health is a lot. So what it means is, like, after you do this, and this enemy gets CC'd, they'll take a percentage of their HP damage. Um, what Orn can do, well, like first of all, you know, if your Morgana roots the enemy, it's going to be increased. If your Ash, any type of CC is going to be increased. But you as an Orn can also do something. As you can see, he's brittled. Boom! You can briefly knock back the enemy, dealing the bonus damage. As you can see, and then boom! It does a lot of damage. You saw that 1050 damage and the, the reason that it does a lot of damage is first of all the dummy has a lot of HP. Secondly, that basic attack that you do against a brittled enemy does, you know, the maximum HP damage, which in the late game is 21% maximum HP. Can you imagine how much damage that does against a Garen, against a Mundo in the late game? So this ability does a minimum amount of 260 magic damage to minions in the late game. Yet again, these numbers are not as dramatic in the early game, but basically it's it's a good tool to clear wave. However, they've maximized it at the same number for jungle camps, which means you're not going to be clearing jungle as fast with this. Um, 
so yeah yet again like just to show you because i know this is a bit of a hard ability to understand you see like there is the first charge and then the second choof and the second choof applies the brittle effect on the enemy so as you can see boom and if i put multiple dummies here uh, so multiple enemies basically you can see this ability oh wait let me show you this ability applies AOE effects. So you can hit this dummy and then this dummy as well. So like as you can see, boom and boom. You see, both of them are gonna have the effect on them. However, it's not a big range. As you can see, if you do it just like this, like it's 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 quite easy to miss it. Like if you do it like this, you can see I missed this dummy, but I hit this one. So it's not gonna be easy to, to hit it on multiple enemies. However, if they are close to each other, it is gonna work. Now let's talk about the third ability. Orn charges, dealing physical damage, which skills with his armor and magic resist. So the more armor and magic resist you have, the more damage this does. Let's just quickly buy another armor item just to increase this damage. Because why the hell not? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so it skills. Bear in mind, it skills harder than it looks here. Because, you know, 50% bonus uh, armor, 50% bonus magic resist. But his passive gives another 35% as well. So... You see, you see what I mean? You get tankier and you do more damage. It all skills with each other. So if Orn ramps into terrain, which is a wall, basically a wall, he creates a shockwave that knocks up enemies for 1.25 seconds. So let me show you. Terrain like this. Boom. You see, you'll knock up enemies within this, this circle. And then you may be asking, does this work with his first ability? Of course this works with his first ability. Of course it does. So as you can see, if you do it into a terrain, you knock up enemies. If you don't do it in a terrain, you simply just go through the enemies and, you know, do nothing. Another thing to understand is, let's take a look at it. Uh, it creates a shockwave that knocks up enemies for 1.25 seconds and applies the same damage to those in the area. So when you go through the enemy, you apply damage, but when you knock them up, boom, you apply the damage in the whole area like this. You see the same damage. So Orn's charge destroys magma pillars as you can see it destroys your first ability boom you do get stopped by it but it destroys it and it destroys terrain created by enemies so jarvan's ultimate for example you'll destroy it you can literally use jarvan's ultimate as a wall to knock up enemies with it so that makes orn an incredibly hard counter to jarvan for example and it, whenever you hit a wall, or whenever you destroy your magma pillar, sorry, or destroy the enemy Jarvan ultimate, you'll reduce the cooldown of this skill by 25 seconds, 25%. So if you use your first ability and destroy it, you reduce the cooldown. Let me show you real quick by putting my cooldowns on full, like this. Boom. Oops, I, I actually filled it. Let me show you again. If I put this down here, and then dash to it, boom, the cooldown goes from 8 seconds to six seconds if you pay close attention to it now let's talk about which is my, now let's talk about my favorite ability the ultimate let me just first show it to you before reading it you can get like a big ass what is it called an, 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 an uh, massive lava element is what they call it it comes towards you and then boom you can smash it back let me show you again because this looks very very cool like this and you can charge on it whenever you want you can charge on it whenever you want so let's see what it actually does. Orn summons a massive lava element, which stampedes towards him, dealing magic damage to the enemies. As you can see, if I do it like this, you can see the arrow is pointing towards Orn. You see? It's pointing this way. So if you do it like this, it's going to move to you, as you can see. And as you can see, it does magic damage to the enemy. It's not a lot, but it does magic damage. Also important to notice is it applies brittle on the enemy. As you can see boom you see it applies brittle so what does that mean you know when you sorry i'll explain what it means after but basically you can push it back the elemental also slows the enemies by 60 percent so this slows them by 60 percent but this is not the main part of the ability the main part of the ability is when you push it back Orin can recast this dash with a headbutt if he dashes into the elemental he redirects it and empowers it it then knocks up the first champion hit for one second and subsequent champions for 0.5 seconds, also dealing bonus damage and reapplying brittle. This is important because, like as you can see, it goes through and then I push it. 
he does a lot of extra damage. That damage is coming from brittle. It's coming from the brittle that it's, that's being applied on the enemy as you can see. And then it reapplies brittle. Which means you can yet again lock up enemies like that. This is all very very important for the combos. Which is what I'm gonna be talking about right now. And uh, yes, I've done my homework on this. And please bear in mind with me, because this is not going to be an easy part for me to explain. First of all, I already explained that you can use your third ability on a wall to knock them up. So let's talk about combos. The first and most obvious combo, and let me just actually place a dummy here, is you put your first ability behind the enemy, wait a little bit, and knock the enemy into that first ability. This is the most obvious combo, right? Like you can use your first ability like this, and then knock the enemy into it. And you don't have to wait exactly for it to... to you know, you don't have to wait for it like this. If you time it correctly, like that, you can instantly knock up the enemy whenever it shows up. So, if you're in a 1v1 situation, to maximize your damage, you can use your first ability, second ability, and then third ability. This is like a quick damage combo. To truly maximize your damage during this combo and to maximize your CC, you use your first ability, your second ability, your basic attack, and then your third ability. Because you know that basic attack is going to proc the brittle effect and do maximum damage. So let's talk about the ultimate. You know, the obvious way to use your ultimate is like this. You bring it through the enemy and then boom. However, the enemies are going to be able to see your ultimate coming, right? You can also, for example, bring it from a different side like this. And then boom, you see? And the, my favorite is probably going to be this one. For example, the enemy is doing the Baron, okay? And you don't, like, of course, this one is likely going to be more, more powerful. You know, you bring it through them and then you push it into them. But, like, you can also do it like this. Like, the enemies are doing Baron, you want to do a surprise engage. Remember, you don't have to apply Brittle on them to knock them up. This com this one is going to do a lot less damage, but it's like a big surprise. Let me show you. You make it come from here. And then when it goes here, boom, you immediately knock up the enemies without them even knowing you were coming. You knock them up and your team engages. Bear in mind, this does a lot less damage than doing it like this. However, this is like a crazy way of surprising your enemy. Also, I want you guys to remember your the first charge of your ultimate slows the enemy. Now, can you imagine this dummy? Okay, let me let me let me show you another situation where this can be very useful. Let's say this dummy right here, this one, is trying to run away here. Okay? Let's say this is the dummy, and then he's gonna run like this. You can charge him in with your ultimate to slow him. He's gonna be slowed, and then you use your ultimate that way. To knock him up while he's running away you see so you can do that as well now let me show you some of the combos okay because now it's gonna get real fun so you can combo his cc quite effectively so let, i showed you this way already boom boom and boom right like i showed you this way already now let's talk about comboing it with your ultimate you can either start off with your ultimate First ability, combo, brittle, and then boom, and then second ability. Like, there's many, many different ways to combo it. And then, of course, you apply brittle again with your second ability. This is like, this is going to be so much damage. But my favorite combo is going to be this one. You use your first ability, your ultimate, your second ability, a basic attack, the second part of your ultimate, which is going to knock them up again after your basic attack, then another basic attack to knock them up again, and then your third ability to knock them up again. Crazy, right? Let me show you. First ability, ultimate. Wait, uh, this is such a brain fart. I I'm not going to say first ability. I'm just going to do the combo. Okay, I'm just going to do it and show you guys. Oh my god, that's the combo. It's crazy, right? It's honestly crazy how you can do a, a combo like that. Um, let me see. You also have ultimate, first ability, Another ultimate, third ability, second ability, for, um, basic attack. This one is to do a bit faster damage. No, sorry, this one is like faster and easier than the other one. The other one is like the ultimate combo. This one is like the normal combo, the normal all-in combo. So it's going to be ultimate, first ability. Let's, let's, let's do it. Ultimate, first ability, ult, boom, and boom. This is easier. 
This way, you're not proking your brittle every single time, but this is a much more beginner-friendly one. So ultimate, first ability, ultimate back, third ability, second ability, and then another basic attack. The second ability on top is just for a little bit extra damage. This combo does less damage than the first one, but it's much, much more easier and much more beginner-friendly. Um, let's see. Uh, so another combo is you use your first ability, your second ability, basic attack, and knock them up into your enemy, and then you can use your ultimate as well. I don't really recommend this one because you've already done your full combo, but if you have a lot of ability haste in the later stages of the game, this can be useful because then you can use your abilities again. So like you can engage on the enemy, uh, use all of this, basic attack, and then you ult him. Because then when your ultimate comes through, you can go right back in and do your combos again. I only recommend this if you have a team comp with quite a lot of slows. So for example, you have a Morgana in your team with a Wildlife Scepter, because the enemies do have to be slowed for you to consistently be able to land your abilities like that. So, you know, to like use your ultimate after your combo. Um, did I miss anything? First ability, ult. Well, obviously there's many different ways to use your combos, right? Like you can use this, your ult, you can knock up the enemy into it, and then with your ultimate, and then basic attack, second ability, basic attack. There's many different ways that you can knock up the enemy. This one is a bit better in case you think the enemy will be able to flash away or like dash away, run away. So let me show you again. Uh, first ability, ultimate, you knock them into it to make sure that they don't run away. And then you use your combo. This one is like does less damage than the ultimate ultimate combo that i've showed you but it's much more reliable because the enemy is literally knocked up they cannot dodge your ultimate when you do it like this so let me show you again um let's see first ability ult first ability ult you knock them into your first ability then you into your ultimate basic attack second ability and basic attack like this one is probably going to be more vi viable because enemies cannot dodge this one. They, there is no counter. Even tenacity doesn't counter it because you're knocking up the enemy constantly. So I really would suggest you to go back into the video, look up all the combos, the ultimate combo, the easier ultimate combo and the more reliable ultimate combo. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, you can flash combo your first ability. I'm really not sure why you would do that. But hey, you can. I mean, perhaps you could do it like flash combo and then, I don't know, like this, you know, like you can flash your first ability in the middle of it. So like if you're engaging from here and there's like a lot of enemies doing Baron, can you pretend that they're doing Baron? You can like kind of flash combo in and then knock all of them up. You know what I mean? However, it would probably be actually thinking about this. You can do a crazy combo. You use your ultimate, your first ability and flash. And then, wait, let me, let me actually try it. Like this, and then this. Oh my God, yes. As you can see, I, like, I just came up with a new combo. I just came up with a new combo. And you know what? There's actually another combo, which is insanely hard to pull off. Remember how your ultimate applies brittle on the enemy both ways? So like, look, it applies brittle, and here it applies brittle too. You can maximize your damage. Okay, I don't even know if I can pull off this combo. By basic attacking the enemy after the first charge, flashing behind your ultimate, and pushing it back. Let me let me try to show you what I mean. Uh, let's see. Oh my god, you have to be so fast with it. Wait a minute. Oh my god, I think it's possible, but you probably have to be insanely fast with it. I, I, I think it's possible, but you have to be fast. But basically, this is not an important combo, as it's way too hard to pull off. So, that's it about the combos. I probably did forget a few things, but I showed you the most important things to know about Orn. So let's show you how to build Orn. Oh, my ass is actually sweating just doing all of this because I did my homework on these champions. This is Volibear, this is Orn, and like I have to do it all right because you know that this guide has to stay relevant for weeks and months. So let's talk about the builds. Um, to be fair, to be fair, yet again, Riot has done quite an amazing job giving you this, you know, the standard builds for Orn. I only adjusted a little bit, but this one right here, honestly, perfect. What can I say? Like I'm not gonna change something about it. 
just to, to make my build unique. So we're talking about Baron Lane Orn right here. Sunfire Aegis is very likely gonna be his core item. I mean, every tank, you know, like Scion or, or anyone like, like a tank like that is gonna be building a Sunfire Aegis. And of course, that's gonna be Orn as well. Thorn Mill is gonna be incredibly powerful on Orn as well because he's so tanky and the enemy's basically attacking you, you're gonna be applying anti-heal and you're gonna do a lot of damage. Especially because Thorn Mill does bonus damage based on your based on your bonus HP and bonus armor. And remember, Orn gets a 35% bonus HP and armor from items when he's maximum level, which also results in more damage from the Sunfire Aegis and from the Thorn Mill. And that's why I love the Amaran Twingard third item as well, because this item further, in further increases your armor and magic resistance to do even more damage with your Sunfire Aegis and Thornmill and it makes you even more tanky. It's like, it's like a circle. All of these items join the circle. And a Spirit Visage, um, this is a bit of a meh. You only really want to build this if you, you know, if you have a shielding teammate or like a healing teammate. Otherwise, you're much better off going for a Force of Nature. Um, Abyssal Mask can also be good. The old Abyssal Mask would have actually been amazing on Orn, but even the new Abyssal Mask is going to be quite good. Um, Searing Crown can be interesting, but meh. I would say meh, because this is like a flat damage item, and you want to have more scaling damage items, like, you know, the Sunfire Aegis and the Thornmill. See, this item, the Dawnbringer, Dawn Shroud, is amazing, however, only against enemies that can be invisible. If you're against an Evelyn, against a Kha'Zix, against a Vayne, especially Vayne, oh. if you're against, you know, any sort of an invisible type of champion, build a Dawn Shroud, build its second item. Hell, you can even build it first item if you're against a lot of invisible enemies, because this item also skill the damage skills with bonus uh, HP. Yet again, referring back to the passive. And you'll reveal all enemies when you immobilize them. And Orn is filled with immobilizing abilities. You know, even your basic attacks against brittle enemies is going to be immobilizing the enemies for like 0.2 seconds or whatever. So Dawn Shroud, this makes Dawn Shroud an incredibly good item because you're consistently going to be using this item. For the boots, you're going to be going for armor boots, uh, Mercury threats. I mean, you can play them, but you already have your Unstoppable from your second ability, which can be extremely powerful, by the way, because it, it does make you Unstoppable only for like 0.75 seconds. But if timed correctly, you can see the potential that it brings, right? For the enchantment, of course, you want to go for Stoneplate just to be as tanky as possible. Perhaps you could go for a, for a Mercury's Meteor or for a Meteor. Um, because you do knock up enemies very consistently, so you could possibly put a meteor on top of them to do even more damage to them with your full ultimate combo. For the runes, you go for Grasp of the Undying. Weakness, obviously weakness, because even the first charge of your ultimate, which slows all of them, applies weakness on them. You're consistently going to be applying your weakness on the enemies, so you will always be using weakness when you play Orn. Here you go for Conditioning, yet again referring to the passive. Late game, you'll be insanely powerful because you'll be you'll you're gonna be stacking armor and magic resist, and it's gonna be 35% is gonna be added to it when you're level 50. Yeah, level 13. Sorry. Here, demolish is great because yet again you're gonna get a lot a lot of maximum HP, and you're gonna do a lot of damage to turrets. So demolish is just infinite value that you get. Then here you go for ignite and flash. I, I hope that I didn't forget anything. I, like, I read through my homework multiple times, and I'm pretty sure I didn't forget anything. So make sure you give this video a like, because I actually put quite a lot of effort into it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next Wild Rift video.